Welcome to a special edition of Pass the FE Exam. It's our 100th episode celebration. I'm Anthony Fasano, and today we'll reflect on our journey together so far. Throughout these videos, we've explored key topics, we've shared successful exam strategies, and we've offered valuable guidance to support engineering students and professionals in preparing for and passing the FE exam. We've had the honor of featuring esteemed guests from around the globe, each bringing unique insights and expertise to our aspiring engineers. And in this special episode, we'll be showcasing some of the top tips from our guests to help you pass the FE exam on your first attempt. This video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. Starting with our first highlight from episode 46 featuring Alejandro Patino, EIT Senior Engineer at Collier's Engineering and Design. Alejandro shared some great tips on the importance of replicating the actual exam environment. These strategies are crucial for effective FE exam prep. Let's hear what Alejandro had to say. I thought that I could uh, kind of study on my own, like kind of create my own process. So I'll tell you like what worked out for me. So I made sure, obviously I scheduled, you know, some time for every subject I did it in the same order that the website lays it out. Um, so what I did was that I actually found some videos on YouTube from Marshall's University, and they actually have some great lectures on each subject. So what I did is that I allocated some time to watch the lectures, take some notes, and then after each lecture, I went to, uh, I bought this book, FE Civil Practice. It's by Michael R. Lindbergh from PPI, I believe. And I did the practice problems for every subject. So I did the lecture and then all the problems for every section. And then right at the end, when I was done with every subject, I took two practice exams, which I purchased from the NCES website. I had two of them and I just took them as if I was there the day of the exam. And that's what worked out for me, actually. Moving on to episode six, we featured Justin Edenbaum a practicing licensed professional engineer and founder of Never Gray. In this episode, Justin shared valuable advice about the advantages of taking the exam during your senior year or immediately after graduation. Let's listen to his insightful advice. The big question that I really want to ask you today is, based on your experience, should one take the FE exam after gaining some experience after college or while they're still kind of in college going through the process, getting near graduation? So I have seen this process from university to immediately after university to a 60 year old taking the exam. And the answer to that is take it your senior year or immediately after your senior year of university. That That's the short answer. In my university, Binghamton University, uh, when I went there 20 years ago in 2000, they actually paid or they co they coordinated to have a van drive people to take the FE exam. And they still to this day, I was talking to my friend Jason who teaches there, uh, they still to this day encourage and encourage students to take it and actually have uh, study classes to do it while you're in school. That's interesting. So why do you think it's so much easier to take it at that point? So. You, you ask the question, should you take it after you have experience under your belt? When you start getting experience under your belt, what well, that's another way of saying is specialization. And as you start doing that, you, you might go down there, let's say I'm a mechanical engineer, I might start looking really finely at sizing HVAC systems for a room or tunnel ventilation fans for a tunnel. 
I'm going to forget a little bit about my differential calculus. I might forget a little bit about my chemistry. I might forget a little bit about my trigonometry. All these things, as time goes on, you forget them. And you can relearn it if you don't take the exam right after school. But if the closer you are to either still being in school or just finishing school, the easier it will be to prepare yourself because you just did it and it's, it's more in your brain and you actually used it. A couple of years of experience, that experience starts to actually push out some of the basics that you're not using. In episode number five, featuring Victor Romo, EIT, a project designer from Daily is Structural Engineering. Victor sheds light on the significance of creating a structured self-study schedule for FE exam preparation. Let's listen to what his schedule looked like. So it kind of came down to just two things, like you said, it was having a game plan and just having a lot of discipline to actually execute that. And so the FE is broken down into, you know, various sections depending on what your discipline is. And so what I did, I got like a huge calendar and, you know, I designated, you know, one week for dynamics or statics, you know, whatever it was. And, you know, towards the beginning of the week, I would watch videos from those sources that I mentioned. And then later on, I would try practice problems on my own. You know, sometimes I would time myself. I think it's about three minutes per question. So I would do that. And so that worked for me really well. And I think it's great that you were able to do that and you were able to build some consistency into your study routine. Like, you know, each week would just be a different topic, but you would kind of follow the same actions, you know, watch the videos first, do yeah, some no, problems. No, no, no. And I, I see how that can be very helpful, especially for, you know, an engineer, you know, we tend to think very structured and very analytical. And I know that you even had a calendar that was really a big part of that. And, and maybe you could show our viewers, but I know you had that was helpful for you in kind of charting it out. Is that right? Yeah, actually, I kind of, it's kind of written on, but um, let me show you guys. So it was just a big calendar like this. And you know, I just like I said, one week this, one week that. And, uh, you know, I designated, you know, time slots within the actual week itself. You know, between this time, I'll be doing this and kind of just keep me on track. It wasn't so much, you know, doing the problems right. It was kind of like you said, getting, you know, a rhythm and kind of keeping that on throughout the entire study process. Next, episode 44 featured Christopher Sivchek, a licensed PE and assistant project manager from Collier's Engineering and Design. This episode really highlights the crucial role of getting support from your company when studying for the FE exam and how it can help you to actually pass the FE exam. Here's a snippet of his experience and the valuable assistance that his company provided. Chris, talk about how your company kind of supported you through this process. I know some companies support their professionals more than others, but it sounded like you had support. Yeah, so just to start off by that, my managers were always very easygoing and you know, they never said, Chris, you're never gonna get promoted because you don't have it, but they pushed me to a position where it was uh, in my best interest, which is the best, the best awesome that they did. They really motivated me to to get it done. Um, what Collier's does that I'm, I hope other companies do, I'm not really sure. They have this professional development initiative that basically what they do is if you have a training course, they pay for it. If, if you have any uh, test materials that you need for this, they pay for it. Um, the day of the exam, they don't make you use PTO. They have like a special task that you build to and pretty much lets you uh, uh, take the exam without having to use PTO, which to me is amazing. Um, so they really have a, a big push for professional development and like they don't just speak it. They like they prove to you and the and the employee that they they have that strong desire to help you. That's great. And I think that's really important. In the world we live in today, for those of you out there listening, getting career growth and development support from your company is very important. It's not something that every company does. The things that Chris are describing is not everywhere and automatic. So it's kind of another thing that you should talk to companies about and inquire about when you are going through the interviewing process or your current company. Maybe you don't know if they support you for your PE license or other certifications, uh, the FE you know, that you wanna pursue. Concluding our highlights is episode number 46, featuring Nabil Newton Khatib, MS, a structural engineer and assistant structural project manager from Tetra Tech. Nabil highly recommends that students and aspiring test takers give themselves at least two to three months of time to prepare for the exam. And also that will help you to avoid unnecessary stress. He also shares his successful TTTT framework, terms, templates, time, and trust 
used during his FE exam preparation. Here's a snippet of Nabil's advice. I would highly recommend people who are trying to take the FE to give themselves at least two to three months preparation. Because you're going to be like taking classes. You're probably going to be like having your capstone, senior design, meeting with your group. So you don't want to really hammer and cram things in because it's not going to feel good on your end. Because you're at the end of the day, you still need to live your life. You don't want to stress your yourself so much where you cannot focus on so many things. And this is a huge topic that I always say, I, I you know, in my speeches, the T, 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 T. That's the strategy that I go always with. First T is terms, concepts. Identify what you are dealing with. Familiarize yourself with the terms, the concepts. The second T is templates. Build your own templates, meaning mm -hmm. exercise and practice problems. The third T is time. Time management is a huge issue that we face nowadays. And the fourth thing is trust. Trust yourself. You cannot skip any T here. You cannot go all the way to the trust while you did not practice. You cannot skip the, the third T, which is time, while you did not familiarize yourself with the concept. You cannot go and, you know, run marathon before you start walking, if that makes sense. You know, and that's, it's, it's clear as mud, right? It's, it's super, you know, straightforward. If you cannot practice, you don't put in the work, you will never, ever, you know, get it. It's, it's a test. That I always say it's the easiest test slash the hardest test. As we wrap up this celebratory episode and look forward to the next 100, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to our listeners and our incredible guests. Your support and engagement have made this channel what it is today. A platform for learning, sharing, and growing together. And we keep getting messages from people saying they passed their exam thanks to pass the FE exam. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below this video, and I will read and respond to them in future videos. Maybe there's a topic you want us to cover or a question you need answered. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.